something um, very deep that goes on with every individual, every person, and it's the fact that Hashem Barach is using the external world, the outside world, to teach us, every one of us, on our inner world. So, if, for an example, you live in America, so it means that also in your heart, you're in America. In your soul, you're in America. If you live in Israel, so it means that also in your soul, you're in Israel. But it doesn't really mean the same America and the same Israel that you think, because it can be that a very holy man who live in America and who live a very holy life, and another person that will be filthy in his mind and will live in Jerusalem, in the old city, so it's not that that means good and that means bad, but that means what that it means for you <coughs> spiritually. So if now you are spending your time here now, let's say in New York, and you're now in New York, but what did you do over there in New York is only good things, it's amazing things, so it can, and that's really what it happens, is that you are now cleaning and fixing things inside of your soul, inside of your spirit, in that aspect that called New York. You're cleaning, you're fixing, you're doing amazing things over there. So. There are verses that are teaching us on how to connect ourselves to Hashem. There are many, many obligations, there are many, many guidings, many, many advices that are given to us by the holy books, by the holy righteous people, and we cannot keep them all. We don't have the power to fulfill our, our obligation and to, and to cover for all of the opinions of all of the rabbis, all of the teachers, and just there is not enough time in the day to do it. It's impossible to do it. If, let's say, you decided that you want to relate yourself, to connect yourself to Chabad, so you want to follow the advice of the Lubavitcher Rebbe and all of the rabbis, the holy teachers that guide you before and, 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 and build that amazing tradition and chassidut of Chabad. So you have your schedule, you have your day set, you know exactly when you need to wake up, exactly what you need to do with your life. So actually there is no time in that schedule also to do one hour it the dut, like Rabbi Nachman of Resef said. Because one hour it will do it, you're going to use it to do it, let's say, like in Chabad, or you're going to use it to learn Tanya, or to do some other things that you must do. So you cannot also be a breast lever and also to be Chabadnik, and then you also a uh, Sfaradi, so you want also to, to, to learn in the holy books of the Abir Yaakov, the Tata's Kabbalah, by the way that he received from his ancestors. Okay, it's it, it not going to work. So, what's the solution? The solution must be that we will find our inner connection to what it gives life to us. What it really gives you life, what it really gives you energy, what it really makes you happy. And that it's not, it doesn't mean that we're now doing it because we want to become happy. It's because that we understand that if we will not be happy, one day we're going to break. And we're going to fall completely from, from all of our dreams and hopes and desires to do good things. Because if a person now falls into sadness, into depression, the only thing that he wants to do is to cover himself and hide himself in bed, under the blankets, under the pillow. He doesn't want to see the day. He doesn't want to feel anything. He doesn't want to experience anything. He doesn't want to meet no one. He doesn't want to chat, doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to hear. Everything is too heavy for him, so he lost everything because of trying to take too much on himself. The thing that we received from Hashem Barach, and that's the scale, that's the, the way to measure, it's the level of happiness. Like that the verse is saying, Ki tetzeu You must go to your salvation with a happy face, with a smiling heart. You need to feel the happiness, or else you're still in the exile. You can be in the exile and learning Torah. You can be in the exile and going to shul. 
but you will still be exiled. Why? Because you are not being redeemed. Redeemed it's to go out from the sadness to the happiness. To become one with Hashem, it's to become one with the one that the Simcha Bim Ono, that in His place you can find happiness. So if you're with Hashem, so you're happy. Why you're happy? Because you're with Hashem. Mm -hmm. Yosef HaTzadik, he was happy. He was dancing. Gashi HaKadosh is saying that he was mefazez umchalker. He was dancing and praising Hashem. And the name of Hashem was in his mouth. Why? Because he had faith. Not because he was succeeding. We're talking about the hardest hours of Yosef HaTzadik. When he was in prison, when he was working as a slave, when he was blamed on things that he never done, when he was divided and, and, and abandoned by his brothers, by his family, separated from them, sent without a trial to prison, to life sentence, who knows what will happen with him. He doesn't have a Sefer Torah with him, he cannot learn from the holy books, he doesn't have his family, no hope, he was not married, no children, nothing. And over there, in that darkness, in the depths of exile, in Egypt, with no trial, with no lifeline, with no salvation, with no one that is about to save him, nothing, no hope at all, and he's happy. Or that he was crazy, or that he knew something that we don't know. What? That Hashem was with him. He felt the presence of Hashem. He felt Hashem in Baruch is with him. So, every one of us can work on that and should work on that to feel that Hashem Midbarach is with you. Because like we said before, it's not that only if you do something good so then Hashem will be with you. Hashem is here if you want it and if you will decide to ignore it. If you don't want it, if you accept it, if you refuse to accept it, Hashem, He is the existence of the world. He is here. He's in the present, he's with you, he's here, he's right now, he's the Havaya Baruch Hu. he's here, he's the creation, he's the creator, he's filling the world, he's surrounding the world, he's inside, outside, there is no place in the creation that is lack of his existence. You cannot find anything else except of him because there is nothing else except of him and on Milvado. Now you're stuck with him. <laughs> so yeah, Baruch Hashem. Another one is, is sharing her problems with us. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Yes. Yes. But still, we're all disappointed and we all feel so hurt and so vulnerable and so upset and so frustrated and so far. And where is the salvation? And what's going on? And what? Hashem has got different thoughts than ours. And all of those doubts, all of those questions must be solved must be solved and there is no one that will come and solve your problems because even if let's say now I came and I gave a class and it answered some of your questions the fact is that tomorrow you're gonna wake up with another question that's how it's gonna be why because Hashem he wants you to grow it's like your kid he came to you and he answered on that test 100% A plus great you're gonna give him a candy more than happy but what the result going to be that now you're going to go move to the next subject. Oh, no. And yeah, yeah, you know, that's life. Hashem just wants you to succeed more and more and more. And in spirituality, there are no limits. So the fact that you're going to speed up now and going to achieve huge and big things and amazing things, it's not going to hold you back from keep on working and achieving things in the future. So a person needs to set up his mind, his intention, always to want to achieve more, always to want to succeed more and to find more about Hashem. About Hashem. What that means, more about yourself, about your true self. And we must understand that the fact that people outside in the world are not aware to that gift that we received from heaven, the people don't know how great it is to be close to Him and what it means even. Because many people can tell you that it's amazing to have money. Okay, let's say that it's amazing to own your own house. Great. Me, myself, after five years of, of, of marriage with my wife, she wanted us to buy a house. We made all of the, the, the things that we could have done to buy a house and we bought that house and we really thought that that house would be amazing. That's what we dreamed of. But 
In reality, after three years, it was the worst prison we ever had in our life. And then we decided to sell that house, to buy another house, and to move on in life, and great, and Hashem Baruch helped us. And we had the ability to buy a second house even without selling the first one. Wow, amazing, huh? Yeah, that's what you think. Great. And then we moved to that second house after investing bags of blood into that house. And we found ourselves over there in a worse prison than the first one. I can swear to you on that. My children are here to testify. They will tell you. It was hell. It was hell. And we owned two houses, and the first one was already rented, and everything looks, on paper, looks perfect. But in reality, it was worse than hell. Why? Because Hashem wanted us to go through something, and you can be upset with Him, you can be angry at Him, you can want to fight with Him. I once, a student of mine drove me to one of the classes, and he told me, listen, I'll tell you the truth. If Hashem would be flesh and bones, I would knock him down. <laughs> and that was his heart. That was his heart. So now I'm going to ask you, if you're going to meet a person that just went out of Auschwitz, or already there in Auschwitz, that's what he was telling you, that's what he was saying, would you judge him? He said, no, no. On Auschwitz, you know, we're not talking about that. That I can understand. Okay, I'll tell you that you have people in this generation that are suffering more than people that suffered over there in Auschwitz. You have people today in this generation that are losing their minds and they're rather to die than to live. So you cannot judge a person until you reach his place, until you understand what really emotionally he's going through. So you can never judge, you can never understand what's going on in the hearts of people. And that attitude you should use, especially for yourself. <coughs> Not to criticize and to hate yourself and to blame yourself on your own sorrow. On those hours when you're giving up, when you fall to sadness, when you fail, when you give up, when you say, that's it, I'm not serving anymore, I don't care, I'm not praying, I'm not keeping Shabbat, I'm not eating kasher. Also, don't judge yourself on those hours because you're not aware to yourself completely to understand where that despair came from. When you will search and learn yourself and find your true self, and going to understand how things affect your life, then judge yourself. But before of that, you don't have the tools for that. You can receive one phone call from a person, and for you it's going to be a very, very friendly conversation, just chatting, talking. You finish that conversation, you hang the phone. I'm not like that. 20 years ago there were phones that you were making. Like that. Today everything is like that. But okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ancient in a way. So you hang the phone like that and suddenly you feel like you want to die. And nothing happened. It's a friend of yours, it's a relative, he just asked how you're doing, what's going on. And in the end of that conversation, like, you feel like death is floating around you and you don't know why. So first of all I'm telling you why to contradict that? Why to try to erase that feeling? Why not to accept the fact that it's really happening to you right now? What is going on with you? That conversation really affects you. You can talk to your mother and you want to die. You can talk to your father and you want to kill yourself. You talk to your best friend and you hate life and nothing happened. No, it's not that nothing really happened. Just maybe you're not sensitive enough to feel what really happened with you during that conversation. Which energy was, was, was affecting you and, and really causing that sadness, that, that, that depression, that frustration from life, that despair. And we are so sensitive and so gentle and so fragile that we must understand ourselves. People that finding themselves in the age of 40 or 35, 50, not married, and now they're going to hate themselves. You lost that opportunity. Why you went to argue with that person? Why you didn't accept that offer, Shidduch offering? All of those things are only a bunch of lies that the evil inclination is telling you to break your spirit. 
You don't know who you are, and if you want to know who that you are, so stand in front of your mirror every day and have a friendly conversation with yourself until you're going to know the real answers. For an example, you refuse to date with that person. Why you refuse to date with that person? Because something in that person was reminding you of a certain emotion, a certain feeling that you couldn't stand. And she was nice, and he was perfect, and everyone said, but you felt something inside that told you, no, don't do that, don't do it, jump off the window, don't do that, never. Why? Check. Remember, try to remind yourself who he was reminding you of. What was the situation? What really was the case? What really happened emotionally inside of you? Why you decided to reject 20 offerings in the same year. Why? Maybe you were in a situation that you were really not able to deal with emotions, with relationship, with conversation, with someone else that will get inside your privacy, to your space, to your room, to your life, into your heart, into the pain that you were going through from another direction. Only if you will start judging yourself favorably, and working on becoming your own best friend, understanding and listening with no end, and trying to explain yourself over and over, and hearing what you have to say, and trying to understand where is it coming from. Only like that you can have a spiritual success. Without that, you're still divided and separated from your own soul. Because between you to your soul, you have an emotional body that suffered a lot of pain and is blocking and rejecting spiritual developments because he's afraid of emotional accidents. He doesn't want to be hurt again. He doesn't want you. You don't want to be hurt again. You don't want to be vulnerable again. You don't want to feel ashamed again. You don't want to feel insulted again. You don't want to be a disgrace again. You don't want to deal with those feelings. And I can understand you. And you, if you're going to dig deep inside yourself, you will find that logic and you're going to understand yourself as well. But as long as you're not confronting yourself and you're just criticizing yourself, oh, you're worthless, oh, you're ugly, oh, you're stupid, oh, you're dumb, oh, you failed again, oh, you don't have no hope. So that's it. You killed yourself instead of giving yourself a chance. Instead of healing yourself in every situation just by accepting your true self. Just by getting into the depth of those situations, understanding the roots of your problem, and then figuring out the truth of who you really are. In the end, I'm telling you, and I can make an oath for you that you will know that I mean, and I know that thing in 100%, it's true. When you're going to find your true self, you're going to find a holy, pure, good, innocent angel lives inside of you. That's it. Fragile and scared and don't want to be hurt. But righteous and pure and innocent and good. And that's why we're not supposed to be afraid at all to express ourselves. Why are you afraid to laugh? A few weeks ago, I met a person after the class. She was laughing and she's hiding her, her face while she's laughing. She's laughing and she's hiding her face. She's hiding her teeth. She's hiding her laugh. Why are you hiding yourself? Because someone laughed at her once, it's enough. And of course, that if someone was laughing at her for years on years, so she, her self-esteem is destroyed. And that's it. And one will be destroyed and now he's not allowed to laugh. And another person cannot walk straight in the street because he's afraid that people from the profile will look at his nose. So all day long he will walk like that because he doesn't want people to look. And people are going through that pain. And dyeing their hair and changing their colors and dressing for other people and talking in different voices and making up a certain laugh and not coughing and not blowing their nose. Okay, so why you cannot be who that you are? Only because you haven't built your inner peace. That you haven't built a friendly relationship with yourself to understand that you are who that you are. And that's it. And it's final. And that's the creation of Hashem. 
It's not some stupid science that made you, oh, maybe I'm going to make his nose like that. No, you're not Pinocchio. You're not grandfather. is not uh, Saba Geppetto. No. You're flesh and bones. Pinocchio had dreamt to be like you when he was a woman and a doll. He hoped, oh, when I'm going to be like him, when I'm going to be a real boy. I want to be like him, I want to be like Tzvi, I want to be like Tzvi. <laughs> That's what he really wanted all of his life. And now you got that gift. Now you are who that you are. But you're not using it because of your lack of confidence, lack of faith in yourself. So what's so wrong with the fact that you like music? So what's so wrong with the fact that you like to dress like that you like to dress? What, that people have opinions? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? And you know why you care? Because you are not your own best friend yet. When you will become your own best friend, you will feel comfortable with yourself. Only the fact that you agreed with all of those silly people that are making fun of you and mocking you and destroyed you until today, and you chose to join them instead of joining yourself and fight with all of them and not to listen to all of their rebukes and, and bad words, and you joined them. There were people in Germany in the time of the war, Jewish people, that they were crying and begging to the Nazis not to kill them because they are part of them. They felt so related to the German nation. No, we are with you, we're loyal citizens. We are with you, we want to join the army. Are you crazy? Yes, they were crazy. 100% crazy. I read once a testament of a person that when he saw the Nazis killing Jewish innocent people in the streets, he felt ashamed of being a Jew and he wanted to hide and to join the Nazis. And, and I'm telling you, I cannot judge him. Even that crazy situation, he was embarrassed to be a Jew in the time of the Holocaust and he felt like, why they're not taking me to be with them? Look at them. They're all beautiful. They're all tall. They're all blonde. They're all strong. They all have blue eyes. Amazing! Amazing block of, of, of the eyes that you cannot see the truth. If that's beauty, so I don't know what you're going to call beauty. The Torah is testifying on Yosef and Sadiq that he was beautiful. <coughs> I don't see that it's written over there that he was blonde or that he was tall or that he had blue eyes. No, it doesn't mention even. He was beautiful and he had the shape of the face of his father Yaakov that had the same face of Adam Arishon, of the first man. Okay, so how, how was he, how, 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 which haircut he had, or side curls like mine or like his, the beard was like his, like yours, like mine. Which? No, it doesn't written. Sarai Menu, it's written on her that she was beautiful. And there is no description, no explanation. Okay, I want to be like Sarai Menu. So I'm telling you, you need to be that short and that fat, and you will be exactly like Sarai Menu. That's how you need to be. Sarai Menu was like that and like that. That was Sarai Menu. No, you think she was taller? And what? What was her size? No! No one cares. That's not the real beauty. It's not important. That's why the Torah is not mentioning it. If it would be important, the Torah would mention it. The Torah would tell you that it's important to be tall, to be blonde, to be... I don't know what. If the Torah is not telling you that it's important, so it's not important. If Hashem never revealed His will that His nation will look in a certain way, look at our nation today. All the colors, all the shades, all the, the, the cultures, everything we contain today. Why? Because Hashem wanted it to be like that that we will use as ambassadors to reveal the light of the truth to all the nations. So he blended us with all the nations and he brought us all to become one again and he's uniting us again after the huge horrible exile in the four corners of the universe and now he's bringing us all back together and everyone got the connection to another section in the world and together we can pass the message and to bring a complete redemption to all nations, in all languages, to all cultures. But only how, when you will accept who that you are and gonna stay the holy one that you want to be, gonna keep the light of your own soul, 
that is revealing itself through you in a certain color, in a certain uh, speed, in a certain shade, in a certain um, um, flow, in a certain way that is unique for you, for yourself. And with that, you can bring thousands of people to come closer to Hashem. If you have an interest in, in music, if you are, like sports, so you need to use that to reveal godliness in sports, in music industry, in whatever you do in life. And that's your mission. Because you are being in touch and you meet so many people in the music industry, in the sport industry, and it doesn't matter what industry, and over there in those places you have effect on those people, something that I am not able to do. I cannot communicate with those people that are your best friends. They don't want to hear me. They're counting on you. So you need to count on yourself and to understand your importance. Who Hashem made you to be. When one person in the other side of the globe will suddenly gonna say, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokein, Hashem Echad, all of us will be so excited. So now, when you're a lawyer and you go to work, so say Shema Israel over there, and that's gonna be exactly the same. And you might even wake up souls that would never wake up if they would see that other person on the mountain that screams Shema Israel in your office. There are many, many Jews that you may be even not aware to their Judaism. They themselves might even not be aware to their Judaism. Because you don't know who are they, and they also don't know who they are. But when you're just going to smile, and going to be positive, and going to be friendly, and going to say, Hi, how are you? What's going on? And yes! Yesterday we went out from the supermarket, the person came, started asking me questions, so I explained to her, so she said, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm also Jewish, but I'm not religious. I told her, we're not religious also, we're keeping Shabbat and we're eating kosher, that's it. <laughs> we're not religious, what it means to be religious? I don't know. We're keeping Shabbat, we're Jewish, we're eating kosher, that's it, all the rest is history, we're having fun. Now you want to learn Torah, we're sitting learning Torah. We're learning other things also, not only Torah. My kids are learning math and learning English and they're learning about the Star Wars. They are yeah. all the yeah. empire. Yeah, we're growing. It's a life. Adjusting. Getting into life, reality. You know how much inspiration I found from, from Hollywood movies and I'm not talking about my childhood. No, really I'm talking about Disney movies. I can talk to you about Disney for years, not hours. There is so many sparks over there. There is so much light over there. So, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm not Haredi and I'm not working for the Haredi community. It's not me. I'm sorry. I am who that I am and I'm happy to be who that I am. And I'm receiving messages from Hashem Barach while I'm doing the certain things that I'm doing that someone can say that he's not accepting it. Great, I hear you. Great! There are books of halakha that are saying that if in the house of yours, even if you're not watching it, just your wife is watching it, there is a television, and now you came to shul and you want to pray chazan, you want to stand chazan to be a messenger of the public to pray, so the public not supposed to be a tzedek with your blessings, because you have a television in your house. Okay, I hear the halakha. I am not keeping the halakha. Not because I have a television in my house. I don't have a house. <laughs> I'm stuck with no house, so I can't keep the halakha. <laughs> <laughs> but it's reality that a person must understand, okay, there might be a person that, he, let's judge everyone favorably, let's do a favor to everyone. He is so righteous that he's able to keep all of those halachot. Unfortunately, today, this generation, most likely he won't find a minion. He won't find a minion to pray. Uh, so, okay, maybe that's the exile. But for him it's the exile, for me it's my, back, my, my, my way back home. That is my way to come back and to find Hashem. Because me as a child I went through certain things, and as a young teenager I went through different things, and then when I woke up to the tshuva, Hashem used certain things to wake me up, and not others. 
So now I have certain gratitude and some things are inspiring me and helping me to wake up and I don't want to drop them because those are the tools that Hashem Yitvarach used to bring me into life, into the life that I hold today, that I have today. If now today you see that there is a certain singer, yeah, a rap singer, a rock singer that will make an amazing hit and that hit will get one billion views, okay? I want to see that orthodox singer that will hold the mic with his very fixed organized beard with a black suit that will have one billion views on his video, okay? If you have 30,000, 40,000 views on a Jewish religious song, it's amazing. And I'll tell you that it's the same 5,000 people that watch that song over and over and over again. And it's okay. It's also a great number. It's also a great number. It's an amazing exposure. It's a wonderful thing. It's not bad. But Hashem Barach is using the experience of the world Wisdom between the nation, Chokhmah Bagoim, Ta'amin. We're not talking about faith. We're not talking about following their faith. We're not talking about going to those clubs and to dance. No, we're saying you should learn what is reaching out to people, how you can communicate with people in a better way. And I have a student, for an example, that he's rapping, that he's a singer. And he, may, he knows how to lyric, and, and, and amazing rhymes, he knows how to rhyme, amazing. And I'm always telling him, you must use that talent that Hashem gave you. You must use that, that, that gift, because it's a gift. One can rhyme, one can dance, one can play basketball, and you don't know how you're going to save lives of people with that talent. The problem is that you ignore the talents that God gave you. But if you're not going to ignore them and you're just going to use them, you're going to see how much noise you're going to make in the world. Because really, to find someone like you with the faith that you have in those places is very rare. At those places, the foreign places, the outside places are, are compared to darkness. So now let's compare you to a candle, to a shining light. It's much more useful in the darkness than in the day. Me, I lived in Jerusalem all of my life, and in the last two years that I was teaching in Jerusalem, I felt like I, 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 don't, I can't find my purpose over here. I lived in Jerusalem, I lived in Rechavia, I could go every day to the Western Wall and to do it, what do and I did, and I was. And I was going to Graves of Tzadikim, and I was teaching, and I had an Amuna Center in Jerusalem, and I felt that I'm doing the best that I can, and I met the same seven amazing people every day. The same seven amazing people that I appreciate and I love were coming to my classes every day. Very loyal, very nice, very beautiful, very amazing. Seven people. And today, I'm here in New York following the understanding that Hashem Barach woke me up to understand. And every day I meet another 30, 40, 50, 60 people every day. And online, Two months ago, we reached out to 50,000 people, and in the last month, we, we reached out to more than 150,000 people. We almost tripled the amount, and we don't know all the numbers, because WhatsApp doesn't share all of the information. So through WhatsApp, you don't know what you reached. You know to how many people you sent through WhatsApp. You can never know how many people it reached. Through Facebook, through YouTube, you can tell. But through WhatsApp, that it's the biggest outlet that we use, we don't know. But Hashem is doing it. We don't know the numbers. But we know for sure that at least 150,000 unique people, individuals, not like those ones that are clicking over and over. <laughs> individuals, different usernames, different people. We reach out to them. So you see that in one month we increased. We jumped to another place. Why? Only because of one thing. That you close your eyes and you follow Hashem. And you don't follow opinions and you don't follow your own wisdom and not your own will and not your own desire. You just follow the will of Hashem. And you commit yourself to the light that is coming out from your soul. And another person can say, wow, but how can you live Israel? And how can you do this? And what with your children? And what with your wife? And what with the house? And what with your financials? Okay, great. 
I don't need to answer them. It's not that I will have the right answer. I don't even have the time to answer to all of their questions. I'm doing my own thing. And I know what I'm doing because I'm very connected to Hashem through my own self, through inside, my own inside, by the voice of my emotions, by the voice of, of my soul that is talking to me. Now we're looking to find an apartment. Great. So in the beginning we thought about one neighborhood. And in the beginning it looks amazing. And then we thought about another area because we couldn't find houses over there. And then it looks good. So we checked. And another place we're checking. And the truth is that as much as we're searching and we're realizing that we cannot, we cannot choose. How can I know what will be the right place for me? Like, as much as you know more, that's how much you realize that you don't know. How can I know which neighborhood will have the right neighbors, the right community, the right people, the right... right I, how can I tell? I cannot tell. So there is only one thing that I can count on. And for sure it's not the people that have their reasons to answer to me. What do they think about their neighborhood? If it's good or if it's bad? I don't know what they're thinking. I cannot count on their opinion. There is only one thing I can count on. It's my own emotions, my own feelings, and my prayers. Please, Hashem in Barach, guide me to the right place. Please, Hashem in Barach, help me to find the right place for us. Please, Hashem in Barach, help me with this, with that. Please, Hashem in Barach, with everything that I need. And except of that, I don't have anything else that I can do. And how Hashem going to teach me, and how Hashem going to educate me, and how Hashem going to supply the information that is required for me, if not through my ears, and my eyes, and my nose, and my mouth, and my hands, and my wisdom, and my wife's. That's the only way. That my wife and I will listen, will think, will feel, will assume, and will decide, and will count on Hashem in the end. So except of doing that, there is no other way. And Hashem wants for every one of us to do exactly the same, to follow Him. And to follow Him, it means to follow your true self, to follow yourself. To find yourself to follow. Because if you're going to investigate and going to find who that you really are inside, you're going to see that you are good, that you're amazing, that you're innocent, that you just try to do good. That you're innocent, that you've been hurt so many times in life, that you closed yourself, that you decided to defend yourself and not to expose yourself and not to open up yourself and to hide yourself. But it's not because that you're bad. If you're saying on yourself that you're bad, that you're lazy, it's only because that you don't know yourself and you stop your investigation in a very early stage. You made something wrong, that's it. It's wrong, it's wrong, that's it. It's not allowed, no, it's not true. You might do a horrible mistake with good intention that will show your inside that you're an amazing person that made mistake or that sometimes even you didn't know. You were not aware to certain things and Hashem Barach made you fail. And sometimes Hashem Barach is causing for us those embarrassments that we're going to achieve certain lessons, that we're going to get some wisdom in those dark places that we cannot achieve in the heights. In the illuminating places, there are some things that you can find only in the depths, like pearls, like gold, like diamonds, you know, nonsense, cheap things you can find in the, in the darkness, in the mud, in the field. Also the precious souls, you can find them only in those swamps of darkness, in the mud, in the filth, in the impure places. That's where Hashem in Barach was hiding his pearls, his beautiful stones, his marbles, his diamonds, the precious souls. He kept them in those dark places, hidden from the eyes of the world. And now no one suspects you that you can become righteous. When Noah came to the world and he born, his parents realized that he's about to, to be the savior of the world. So they decided not to call him in no name. For years, Noach didn't have a name because they were afraid that the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, will kill him, will get him. So they made him undercover. There's no baby, no one. Who is he? No one. Not Noah, no one. No one. But there's a baby? No, nothing. It's nothing. No, it's a baby. It's right. No, it's just your, it's your imagination. Nothing here. 
Okay, and by that, they were protecting him. I promise you, Hashem made you exactly like that. Hashem made me also exactly like that. That when you will hatch, when you will grow, when you will bloom, when you will rise, suddenly you will be in a position that can make a real change, a huge change in the world, and no one saw you penetrating to that place. No one saw how you got to that position that you can transfer the way of thinking of thousands of people. Suddenly you can do that, switch to thousands of people around you. Me? I'm no one. No name. What's your name? No name. Hashem Barach is doing those things with us. So if you really want to know who that you are, you must first of all recognize yourself. Find your true self. Find who am I. Make a diary. Write to yourself. Papers on papers. Talk to yourself. Have conversations. Every time you have something in mind, write it down. Put it on paper. Think. Whatever tool you find that is useful for you to make that investment investigation, do. When your intention is to know who you are, what's the purpose of your life, do whatever you need to do. Go to a therapist. I don't know what you need to do. Go do that. I don't want to mention all of the scary stuff that you can do, so I'm going to leave it with that. But do. Whatever it takes for you to know yourself, do it. And don't be afraid. Because in the end of that process, you will find the pure soul that you are. In the beginning, you can say, oh, I'm failing, oh, I'm lazy, oh, I'm falling, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Great. That's only the first steps of that process of finding your true self. But if you will not back off because of the difficulties, if you will not give up because of the embarrassments, what that you will find out in the end is the diamond of your soul, the real true spark, the essence of your life, that you're a holy soul, divine soul, part of heaven that comes from above. And that's what you're going to find in the end of that process. And it won't take you a long time. But you're going to have to break your fears. You're going to have to fight against your own fears that are telling you not to do that investigation, not to find out who you really are. Because when you're going to find out who you really are, it really, that's what will happen. It's going to obligate you to that truth. When you're going to know what's your mission, that's the, I don't know how you say it in English, Nekudata al Chazor, point that you cannot go back from anymore. That's it. Yeah, that's Why are no return? No return. That's it. When you realize the purpose of your life, you cannot go back. You cannot return. So it's an issue. It's a problem. Save money for that moment. You know, <laughs> have a, so the, 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 the health insurance, everything covered, and then go. Find yourself. It can take you one week. It can take you one hour. It can take you a whole year. It, it's not important. But when you will find out who you really are, then you will also going to know what really are the things that are important for you, what really makes you happy, what is healthy for you, what is building you, what is stabilizing you, who are you, what's feeding you, what is building you. And that's the best thing, all 24 hours that you have in a day, to invest only in good things that are building you, that are helping you to become who that really Hashem made you to be. And it's fantastic. And we should learn from what that happens in the world. There can be a crazy person that walks with a camera and he will have thousands and millions of followers that just want to hear what he has to say. And he doesn't need to be beautiful, he doesn't need to be rich, he doesn't need to be a genius, he doesn't need to... He just needs to have certain honesty that will relate to others. That's what he needs to be. That's what he needs to have. He just needs to have some point that people are connected to. That's what you need to have. So it's you. You don't need he, you love him, you like him because he is himself. And that's what you like in him. That he's really who that he is. So when you will be who that you are, that will shine. Your true self will shine through your bones, through your skin, through your body, to the world. And then people will want to join you. Not because of you. Because they will find an opportunity to find themselves, really to be who that they are. And that's what we need to wish for them. 
We don't need all of them to be like me or all of them to be like you. We need them to be themselves. And then their good will shine. And when all the good of all the people will shine, that will be the complete illumination of the face of the Creator that gave each and every one of us a certain face of His own face. Face that are coming from the high face, the face of the Creator Himself. That he created us all in his shape. So we must, and that's our obligation, to reveal his godly light that he planned and, 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 and treasured inside of us to the world. And by doing that, revealing who that you are, you reveal Hashem from your point. And it's another aspect, it's another place, another way to see and recognize Hashem. That no one can recognize Him without you in that way. Only when you will be honest and share and tell, people will have the ability to know Hashem Ibrach like that. And if you're not going to tell, and if you're not going to share, people will never going to hear about it, ever. And it's in your hands to share and to reveal Hashem in the world. And it doesn't need to be on camera, and it doesn't need to be on Facebook Live. It can be in your office, it can be in your street, it can be in the park. It can be that you will save only five people during your lifetime. Is it a small thing for you? For me it's huge. It's huge. To save one person. It's incredible. You really saved the person's life? Yes, with what? I smiled to him that day. That's all what he needed. That's the only thing that he really needed that day. One smile. And it gave him so much strength and power, you can't imagine. Because of what, what have I done? I smiled. Why? I was happy and I was sharing. And I was able to allow myself to laugh and to allow myself to smile and to allow myself to say, Shalom Aleichem, welcome. How are you? What's going on? You can walk in the streets between thousands of people and no one's going to tell you Shalom Aleichem, no one's going to tell you hello. It's horrible. That's darkness. And you can walk in a dark alley and someone will smile to you and will reject all the fears that you had and all the doubts that you had and suddenly you found one friend in the, the peak, the, the worst darkness of the morning. One smile, one good thing that you will just do from your heart can change the life of people. I'm begging you and blessing you in the same opportunity because we're short of time. That you're all going to believe in yourselves. That you're all going to count on Hashem. That He knew what He was doing while creating you as you are. And making you to be that one that you are. So unique and so special and so great. Don't compare yourself to no one else. Just try to see who really you are. Try to understand the qualities and the blessing of being that one that Hashem made to be, handmade of Hashem, of our great Father, and go and be that creation that He made it to be, and reveal His kingship between thousands and thousands of people. And we all can do and bring complete redemption to the world. Amen. 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 This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.